I'm Big Lou, and this is Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And right now, I'm sitting down, got it made in the shade, y'all. I want to tell you what I did last weekend. I uh, did my first, like, slow 225-ish type cook on my Barbecue Dragon Grill Stone on my Weber Kettle. And I did some ribs, and I wanted to see about refueling and it, stuff like that. So this isn't really about the recipe. If you must know, I had some St. Louis spare ribs in the freezer, and um, I just cut them in half the way they do on the uh, Barbecue Dragon website with his video so that I had four little small racks. I rubbed them down with mustard, and I put a rub on that I made up based on a recipe from this book. Yeah, this is a Southern Living cookbook. They've got a smoky, sweet barbecue rub in here. It's really good, but I like it a little spicier. It's got a lot of paprika in it, so I use only half the required amount of paprika. And instead of the other half of paprika, I substitute one part chili powder and one part cayenne pepper, and I kick that spice level up in it a little bit. Now I got a smoky, sweet, spicy barbecue rub, and it's based on this recipe. So that's what's on the ribs. I'm not going to show you the prep work on the ribs. This is about how this cook went, more of a video vlog thing where I put the ribs on there and see how often I've got the refueling. I was expecting a five hour cook. Didn't take that long. Why don't you watch and see how this went. All right, my chimney of charcoal, half chimney of charcoal rather is ready. Maybe even too ready. We're just gonna dump it right there. I said to put it in a pile, but these kind of spread out. Underneath the grill stone, just half a chimney of charcoal. Gonna throw a chunk of wood on it. Just like that. It goes in just that easy. All right. Put the grate on. All right, I got a grill probe right down there. I'm gonna set it so that the vents are over the stone. And we're gonna control the temp with just the vents on top. Vents on bottom are gonna stay at the, all the way open as suggested. All right, the temp's already climbing here. I am using the uh, Chef Alarm because it has a timer on it. I wanna set this timer and um, start timer. And so I can know when we're refueling. So we just started at five hours, all right? And um, I'm gonna get this to about 225 and we're gonna set the uh, ribs on there. Okay, it was climbing steady until it got to about 200. I turned the vents almost closed and uh, it slowed down a little bit. It's gonna go on up to about 225. You can see it's only been about four minutes, but I gotta get these ribs on there now because when I open it, it's gonna let more oxygen in and uh, that's gonna get it climbing, so. All right, just yellow mustard and that rub I made up. Went ahead. Now you can hear the alarms going off on this thing. So I'll turn it off for now. All right, just yellow mustard and the rub I made up. Now, um, they were whole slabs of St. Louis cut, but um, I went ahead and cut them in half just so we can get them on here the way they need to be. Try to get them all over the stone. But my, uh, I might have to move that temp probe around a little bit. Try, probably should have put it in last. All right. And right there and here, there was a little bit of flat meat on the back and stuff and rib tip meat. I'm just gonna put that right there and I'll eat that later. All right, we are one hour in and you can see my vents are three quarters open and they've been that way since about the 20 minute mark. In other words, we're about the last 40 minutes. Here's my temperature. Now, when I'm changing, it got up to 241. It was at actually about 240 when I adjusted the vents, but that's the highest it's been. And it's been in this range, right after I adjusted it, went back down to about 220 and then started climbing back up. It's been doing really, really well. As you can see, we're just now under an hour. And um, if the temperature starts to drop, I will add maybe half a dozen uh, briquettes. But I want to see how long it goes before I have to actually refuel it. All right, we are right at the two-hour end mark because I started at five hours, so we're at three. 
The temperature has begun to drop. I checked it about 15 minutes ago and we were at uh, 227. It's now, you can see it's dropping. So it's time to refuel, and but that's pretty good. Half a chimney of charcoal for two hours. I'm gonna put the camera on the tripod. We're gonna throw about half a dozen briquettes in there. All right, I'm gonna open it up. Oh man, they're looking good already. A lot of pullback here though. They might not take a full five hours. That's kind of tender. They're getting there. All right, I'm eating my little pieces here. This is gonna be my lunch. The ribs are for dinner. Let's refuel this thing. All right, this is my first low and slow cook, so I don't know how many to put in here. But I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And I'm gonna put half a dozen in here. Just like that. On top of where that other pile is with these long tongs. And we'll see how this half a dozen d does. I may need to add more, may need to add less. I don't know. I'm not adding lit charcoal. I feel like I ought to maybe add, I add lit charcoal. It's all sort of my first experience. You're finding out as I find out. By the way, I don't think these ribs are gonna take five hours. I wish you could smell them. Mm, they smell good. open this up let the temp climb all the way back so my vents are wide open now both bottom and top and uh, I can see my temp is already beginning to climb there on my uh, shuffle alarm well I missed the hour mark by uh, three and a half minutes it's dropped down to 219 I checked it when it was at uh, 211 when this was at 211 so we were still under uh, the three hour mark and um, it was at 227, I thought it was holding steady. My vents are wide open, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm gonna watch this for the next several minutes and if it drops much lower than that, uh, I'm gonna add some more charcoal. I put those six briquettes in and we're only about an hour later. So we'll see, maybe I didn't add enough that first time. All right, it's been another four minutes. We're at the 153 to go mark and the uh, temperature has dropped down to about 212 already. So those six briquettes, uh, maybe that wasn't enough. I'm gonna add a half dozen more. See what happens here. Kind of peek in there. They're burning, but a lot of them are just ash falling to the bottom. So I might need to add more than these six. But I do see that the six I added earlier did light. So add these six. As you can see, these are looking good. I don't, that bone's already pulling out. I don't think these are gonna make the full five hours, but I do wanna find out. And why is that over there underneath that thing? Get, get, all right. See if the temperature comes back up and I'm gonna check them here. All right, well, I just added those half dozen briquettes, but I don't think I need it. These, look, 190, they're in the 190s, they're done. It's hard to detect the temp on ribs, but I can feel these are really, they're actually too soft for the way I like ribs. So only three hours. We're actually at three hours and 12 minutes now at this point, because basically they were done. So 195 to 200, these ribs are done. I'm gonna put some sauce on them and leave them on for about another five minutes. All right, so I just added six briquettes here at the three hour mark, but they look done. I checked them with the thermometer. They're done, so I went inside. I heated up my uh, my daily favorite barbecue sauce. My son and I argue about it. His favorite, it has the same initials as Susie Bunny Rabbit. Mine has the same name as the center of a dartboard. But that's what I'm using. The one that has the name is the center of a dartboard. Cause I think it tastes good. Let me try the hook on this thing. All right.
Cutting these two racks of St. Louis spares in half sure did make them easy to flip over with my Cajun pit sticks. I love that thing. And they were getting really tender. You could see the bones are actually beginning to fall out on that rack on the bottom there. I was surprised at the amount of char that was on the bottom of them after only three hours, even though we were using the grill stone. All right. They, uh, and only a half chimney of charcoal that the heat temperatures weren't high. But hey, that's okay. The char made them taste good. And it's just backyard barbecue the way I like to do. All right, so I flip them over and I get the meat side uh, with the barbecue sauce. I'm going to leave it on there for about 15 minutes so it anneals on there real good, kind of glazes over and not too, uh, you know, liquidy or too sticky when you eat them. All right, I have a foolproof method to know how much sauce you need on ribs. It is scientifically proven to be just the exact amount of sauce. So stay with me here and I'll show you how to determine if you have enough sauce. Watch this. If you run out, you got enough sauce. Foolproof method right there, isn't it? All right, we'll leave it on here for about 15 minutes. All right, I've let that stay on there about 15 minutes. So we're probably at the three hour and 15 minute mark. Yep, looking at my timer, we are. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab these and bring them on in. I've checked the temp on them and all, they're in the 190s at least. These may just be perfect. They may be too mushy for me. I don't know. Look at that. Mm. All right, well, here we go. These aren't the largest ribs I've ever seen. Um, they the ones that came in that frozen pack, but look, they just break apart like that. Let's cut them. Bone side down so I can see the bone cut a little better. It's cutting on the bone there. Mm. That's what they look like. There's a little smoke ring there. It's somewhat pink right in there. Let's see a thicker piece. Yeah, you can see better smoke ring with this one. See what I'm talking about? Light doesn't do it justice, but. Moist? Yeah, I would say so. All right, this is the one I'm gonna eat at the taste test. Let's cut them up. All right, well, the Dragon Man on the other video, five hours. I was expecting five hours. My family isn't even home yet because these were done two hours before they were home. And of course, I've let them rest, so they won't even be home for about another hour, hour and a half. Potato salad's not done, sides aren't done. The ribs done in three hours, maybe even a little overdone. All right, here's that one I just cut, all right? Look at that. Mmm. Not a lot of fat right there. The meat, though, just pull off that bone. Man. This is melting in my mouth. Just melting in my mouth. Okay. Well, surprise, surprise. I was expecting five hours, but those small ribs only took three hours, all right? I did refuel it two hours in, and then one hour later with six uh, pieces of charcoal. I really probably didn't need that, but I needed to get the temperature back up to get that, uh, Barbecue sauce on there, so that's okay. I think I could go for hours like that, and it was easy to do, and it seemed to uh, slow smoke them, gave a good smoke ring to the uh, ribs, and y'all, family was satisfied, I was satisfied, and hey, it worked out well. So yeah, the grill stone, you can slow smoke with the grill stone. Thanks for watching it, Big Lou Barbecue.